Tanner, the video, if you all have ever watched this from a few years ago, um, he used scrapbook paper, which you can totally use, but we're going to be using just plain old cardstock today. So you can pretty much make this today. If you have crafting cardstock on hand, y'all could literally cut this on your machine today. You're going to need some hot glue. You don't need the glitter, but the glitter is the razzle dazzle on top of everything. So let's go up close. I'm going to show you all what these look like. So the lights in here really, really show this off. But y'all, look how pretty this is. This is card stock. Like, are you kidding me? And so sparkly. And then we have one like this. I did two just so you all can kind of have a couple to reference. And we're going to be making one. If y'all watched our four techniques on applying... Um, what was it? Four techniques on Christmas ornament, glitter Christmas ornaments. Uh -huh. We did like a maroon and kind of like a bluish, tealish color. And that's our inspo for today. So you're going to need to pick out a cardstock and then just pick out a coordinating shade of glitter. So I have brought in what I'm wanting to do. I brought some extra. I brought some navy and an extra of this maroon. We're going to be cutting our design out of the maroon. So this is just a standard, I will say, mm, 60 pound. 65, probably. 65 pound. I don't yeah. know. You got to jiggle it to know, you know, that's how I know. <laughs> I see people all the time. They're like, how do you know how, what the weight is? And I'm like, I don't know. Jiggle it. Listen to it. Because you can yeah. really listening to it can help you know, like the weight of it. But when you feel it, this to me is a medium cardstock. So yes. I've linked the Ashley Falco Celebration Warehouse for you all. I just linked her entire basic cardstock page for you. That way you can actually go in and pick whatever colors that you want. Um, all of her stuff I cut on, all of her basic cardstocks, I cut on medium cardstock cut settings. So that way you, you all can kind of know how to gauge it. And then um, I brought in some Starcraft glitter. This one is called Arg Matey. All of their glitters are named after like sea creatures or ocean themed things. So this mm -hmm. is like a pirate glitter. We're going to put this on the tips of this. Do y'all not think that's going to be gorgeous? I do. I'm obsessed. I like these like jewel tones. I'm kind yes. of feeling jewel tones for Christmas. Uh-huh. I don't know. And this is a great way. <laughs> I really feel like this is a great and inexpensive way to add in different colors. Like if you're the type of person yeah. who likes to change up your colors for Christmas every mm -hmm. year, but you don't want to buy completely new decorations, having your base, yes. like, nice ornaments that are very neutral color yes. and adding in a new color with these paper ornaments every year would be phenomenal. Like, these could be your splash of color. Yes. I love that. That's a good idea. So, I've got my cardstock and my glitter. Obviously, you're going to be needing a Cricut machine. I've got some paper plates. I've got one for glitter, one for glue. You're going to need some Elmer's School Glue. I've got, this is my duster brush. I've been calling it my duster brush. And you know what? <laughs> my little baby paintbrush has disappeared. I said that earlier, and I never found it. Do you need me to go find one? Yeah, just like a small. Okay. We just want like a small little paintbrush. Something that we can do the edges of our um, ornaments with. And then... You can use a bone folder or a spatula for the creasing part. I've got our Lynn Lily hot glue gun here. This is our cordless hot glue gun. It just detaches. We love these. I've got extra glue sticks here. And then that is pretty much it in terms of like your ingredients. So what we're going to need to do now is just go on to the website. So we have a couple different options. So we have the two that I just showed you, and then we have two more. And honestly, y'all, we might even have some more. I'll tell you in just a second. Let's go to makersgonnalearn.com. Um, and then we're going to go to just our cut file. So this is the website. If you've never um, seen our website, this is what it looks like logged in, if you're a member. I'm going to go to our cut files, and you can see we've got pages and pages of cut files. But I need a 3D ornament. So I'm just going to type in 3D ornament. And then it is going to pop up a plethora of 3D projects. But these right here, these paper ornaments, this is what we're working with today. So these are the two that I did previously. And then we have these. And I actually really like this one. 
Um, let's do that one today. You can use either one of those. I've linked this one below for you all because that's the ones that we already made. But it's going to be the same process for all of these. So I'm going to download that. It'll pop into a zip folder. We're going to double click the zip folder, open it in our folders, and we need the SVG. So I'm going to keep this box open, go down to Cricut Design Space. We're going to go to new. Let me save this project really fast. We're going to call that Roman. Okay, save it, save it, save it. And then go to upload, upload image. And then you can just pull this to the side if you want. What I like to do is hit command tab and it'll pop me over to my finder and I can just click and drag that SVG in there. Okay. Now, if you're like, I've never used a Cricut, I don't know what you're doing. If you become a member, we go over all of these steps in slow-mo through our 30 days to master your Cricut. So you're gonna be able to go through all the basics of using Design Space over there, which is super, super helpful. That's like probably our most valuable resource in the membership if I had to pick one. Um, but so anyways, I've got the image in here. Now, we've uploaded our image, we've pulled it in. Now, a lot of times, if you've never worked with 3D files, the score lines come in as cut lines. And so what I mean by that is where we want our paper to fold is often a cut line whenever we pull the image in. And that's just because that's how the files have to be set up whenever they're designed. And so what we have to do is, first of all, ungroup our ornament. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this little ungroup button up here. And you can see now I've got four layers. So if I click and drag and select this little ornament right here, you can see the ornament and the line are on two separate layers, but they're both set to cut. Now, if I didn't do anything, it's gonna cut a line down through the middle here. But what we wanna do is click on just the line and change the operation from basic cut to score, okay? Now, that's all fine and dandy, but we need to make sure to attach that line to our ornament. So I'm gonna click and drag, select it all, and then I'm gonna hit attach down here at the bottom. Everybody catch that? I'm gonna do it one more time with the other one, that way you all can see me do it twice. So right now you can see the line is separate from our little bell ornament. I'm gonna change the color of this so you all can see it better. Okay. So the line, separate from the ornament, if you for some reason bump your line off of the center, select them both. You can align to center. And then I like to select my line in the layers panel and then come over to operations. You can see it's set to basic cut. We want to select score. And when it goes to this dashed line, that's how you know for sure it's going to be scoring. And then we need to select both the bell and the line and we're going to attach those. Okay. Beautiful. Now, these right now, they're about four by six. That one's four by six. This one's like four and a half by six and a quarter. I'm going to make these about five and a half each. I'm actually just going to be cutting this one. So I'm going to go ahead and hide our bell. I just want to cut this one today. I'm going to make this about five and a half. This will allow me to fit eight of these cutouts on to my mat. So I made this about five and a half inches tall, okay? And then we're gonna go to make it. Now, like I just said, I wanna have eight of these. It only looks like I have one. So what you can do, this is something you can do on the canvas, but I like to come over here to my project copies and I'm just gonna bump this up to eight and hit apply. And now with the size proportions of or with the size of this image, you can see it puts it onto two mats. And I don't know that we could get away with getting it on one mat. Now we can maneuver these and fit probably, I don't know, five on there, I would say. Mm -hmm. But I really want to fit them all on one. So let's see here. Let's see if we can shrink it down just a little bit. I'm going to change it just to five inches so it's half an inch smaller. And then we'll go make it. And then you can bump up how many you need. Hit apply. And you can see now I've got a little bit more wiggle room. Let's see what we can do. So in order to get these onto the first mat, 
I'm just going to select one, hit this three dots and move object, and then select the new map and confirm. And then it's going to pop it over onto this side. And you can rotate these if you need to, to fit. We may be able to fit them, y'all. Let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Does anybody have questions so, so far? Tanya was asking about if it would be possible to cut out, it, she says like a half section on the top, one on the top and one on the bottom so they could slide together. Mm. If you'll wait, I, we, I understand what you're yes, saying. And it's like you want a slit on the top here and on the bottom here so that the slits slide together. Yes. And it's, I, I like the train of thought, like I understand where your train of thought is, um, but what we're going to be doing, and you'll see here in a minute, we'll be folding on the score line and kind of getting the same effect that you're thinking, but just gluing it together on that center score line. Right. And the when I first did these, I was thinking like that's what I would be doing. Yes. I thought I would be cutting it and then sliding it together. And there are probably files out there that do that. Um, but our particular file is made more to do this. Yeah. Because you can't, you wouldn't be able to cut it. You'd have to like move that middle line up a, a hair and then keep it on cut and attach it. So it's and like then, a different process. And then it would also, it would have to fit together differently when you add more than two together. Mm -hmm. It would have to be like different. Right. So, so this is just yeah. a more simplified version, but you are going to have to glue them together. Right. So I... Um, I don't want to make this much smaller. I was trying to fit them all onto one mat. Now, I will say the other two that I made, the ones that have this little funky shape and this one, I made these five and a half inches and I was able to fit eight copies on the one sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock. So there you go. If you want to make these ones, you can fit them. Um, this shape just doesn't fit what we're wanting, which is totally fine. We can cut it on two pieces of cardstock. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to hit continue. And then one of the um, supplies that I did not mention was the scoring stylus, which I literally grabbed before we came in here. There might be one in that bucket. I grabbed it before I walked in here. Did you see me? It's over here. You left it on the chair. Oh, I put it on the chair. Okay. I was like, I'm not crazy. I swear. Thanks. Um, so Pregnancy rain. Yeah. That's hashtag facts. <laughs> um, so let's go over here and I'll show you guys this scoring stylus. So this is the scoring stylus. You can use this in any of the machines that do not take adaptive tools. You could also use the um, scoring wheel if you wanted to. If you only have a scoring wheel, we just need to score it. So whatever you've got on hand. And then back in design space, we are going to be using the medium cardstock cut setting. And I'm going to keep it on default pressure. And you can see right now, it automatically wants me to use the scoring wheel. But I want to use the stylus, so I'm going to go to Edit Tools and just select the scoring stylus. Hit Apply. I said stylist. Stylus. You guys know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, that is it. So I'm going to go ahead and put my stylus in my machine. So it's going to go into clamp A. Okay, just pop that in. I have a fine point blade in clamp B. And then let me grab my mats. And then I'm just gonna bray this cardstock down. Okay, I love this color, especially with the navy and gold. I feel like this will be so pretty on a Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. And then let me, we have other design spaces pulled up and I can tell because my machine is like not like not noticing that I'm trying to cut something. So I'm going to X out of these just real quick. Like, um, I don't know why it's not wanting to connect to my sh machine. I'm going to go out and come back in, cancel the cut and go back in. Let's see what happens. Okay. It's going to try to connect. We're going to use medium cardstock. Beautiful. Edit my tools. We're going to use a scoring stylus apply. Okay. I'm making sure. I'm, That's the one from my table that no, I No, I trust the machine. Oh. I don't know if I trust Design Space. I feel like it has other pages open and it's trying to cut something else. But no, it no. just moved so I know that it's going to be us. Like the screen moved so I know it's working on ours. Okay, anyway, 
back to Shelly's questions, we purchase blades from Amazon. Yes. We love the Amazon blades. Um, they're probably linked down below. If not, we, I feel like we put them a lot of different places. But I don't yes. know. I didn't put replacement blades in the description. No, but I thought that they might be in our like favorite our favorites. things. Um, if you want the exact link to the one that we use, email customer service hi at makersgonnalearn.com and we will get you that link after the show. I can't drop a link because I am um, not an admin on our page and I'm just from my, my personal YouTube commenting as Lauren McCoy, so I can't drop a link for you guys. But if you email us, we can give you the link to the exact ones that we use. Yas. And the color of the fine point is the red. So the red is the fine point. If I'm not mistaken, the blue is the deep point, and then the yellow is the, I don't know what you'd, what you'd call it. So like the fine point blade has a 45 degree yes. angle. The deep cut blade has a 65 degree angle, and I'm pretty sure the yellow ones have like a 35 degree angle yes. for like parchment paper and very, very thin, thin material. stuff. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So the only dilemma that we have now, because it did partially cut up in this top left corner, is that I don't want it to cut there again. So what I'm going to do on this first mat is just move it to my second mat. I'm just going to move it over because I know that I've got a full other 12 by 12 sheet I can cut on. Does that make sense? So we're just going to leave that little hole there because I already started cutting. And then we will select continue and we are going to be using the explore three, which I need to change on my canvas. Thank you, Cricut, for letting me know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Explore three, starting from the top, make it <laughs> repeat. <laughs> We're going to get make eight copies. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just going to move this guy. So nothing. And I'm going to actually scooch those over just a little bit. Make sure we don't do anything crazy. And then we've got four over here. Beautiful. Select continue on the Explore 3. We're doing medium card stock. If you guys don't know this process yet, you want to learn today. Okay, and then it automatically pulls the scoring stylus in. And now we can just load our mat right back in. Okie dokie. Here we go. It happens sometimes, y'all. I didn't realize that was your machine. I wasn't even paying attention that we didn't have the Explore I, 3 up here. I forgot that I the scoring stylus wasn't working because I have gotten to the point where I, if I have to score, I just use the scoring wheel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We do love the stylus. I love the stylus. We actually, I, I love know the Lauren stylus the best. Right, because you don't have to change it. Right. Yeah, so it'll score it first, and then it's going to go and cut it. Now, with the adaptive tools, like we're talking about, you would have to like change the adaptive tool out and then put the blade in after it scored. So the stylus is helpful in a lot of ways because you can just put it in the other clamp and the fine point blade will cut right, a me right away after it scores. Hmm. Yes. Okay, I'm pulling these off. Remember, this is the one that we started to cut that we don't really need. So I'm gonna go with gravity, just pop these off. You don't wanna you don't want to just go in here and like pull this off of the mat otherwise it's going to bend your cardstock just kind of peel it away and then i'm going to grab this other piece go ahead and do these so y'all you can see how fast this is to get these cut and scored if we didn't have the machine issue like we would already be putting this together you know slide it in and then in design space we're going to do medium cardstock again and then we will hit go. Now, if you were having a day where where you were just like cutting, cutting a stock. lot of card stock or cutting a lot of HTV, that would be a fantastic tool. But we go back and forth between so many different um, mediums. Mediums that yeah. I would end up cutting. H to, I would end up cutting permanent vinyl on an HTV setting or something. Right. And it would, yeah. Yeah, me too. That's what I fear would happen. Okay, so we've got, these look like little alien boys or like little alien babies or something. Um, so we have all of our pieces. Now, all we're going to need to do, that each have a score line. And now y'all are like really far away. And honestly, it's not that easy to see anyways. 
but there's a score line right down at the middle here. What we're going to do is fold these right along the score line. Okay. We want it to be pretty precise. These score lines did not score as well as normal, which is really strange to me. But these ornaments really only work if you have a perfectly symmetrical design because we're basically going to be gluing it all the way around and they need to be folded exactly in the center. So you want to make sure that you're lining up those score lines in design space before you cut it and score it. That way everything lines up perfectly. And I'm just going to go through here and do all of these at once. You can see this score line better on the smooth side. And then I'm just making sure that these edges are matching up. And then I'm going to go through and you can take a spatula or a bone folder and flatten these out. Now, if you were not Doing the glitter on the edges, I would recommend using color core cardstock. When I say color core cardstock, I mean cardstock that is not white on the edges. Can you all see how this is white on the edge? This is not color core. This is also not Ashley Falco brand. <laughs> this is not Celebration Warehouse cardstock. Um, I just chose this color, but I do recommend using hers because it is color core. Um, and even, even if you do decide to do the glitter on the edges, color core is just usually better looking, in my opinion, on paper projects especially. It's just more usable. Wouldn't you agree? Mm -hmm. And um, you can make these actually without the glitter, and you can't tell that it's been cut out of paper, basically. Right. Now, sometimes I know that the white core is cheaper, Yes. Um, like, and if you plan on cutting something and you don't like the edges, if you're, if it's not that big of a deal, then you can save a little bit of money getting the white core. But a lot of times when we cut stuff, we're going to see the edges and we don't want that white on, down that edge. Right. If you don't have a spatula or a bone folder, you can also just use like a burnishing tool to flatten all these out. Fingernail. Fingernail flat surface, anything like that. Old credit card. Yes, that's a good one. Yeah. Listen, that, that just gave me a memory. Did you guys, whenever you were little and you rode bikes, did you put credit cards on your tire spokes uh -huh. to make it sound like a motorcycle? Yeah. That was the ticket when we were kids. You were not cool if that you didn't on have the a credit back card. And the little bead on the front that would clink yes every time you... oh my gosh the kids still do that okay i have had my hot glue going on thank you jesus i didn't realize i had it on but that's great because i don't wanted it to be warmed up so now what we're going to do is assemble all of our little pieces this is giving me radish oh my gosh <laughs> for sure it literally looks like a radish the color and everything it's fine <laughs> it's still really pretty. Okay, so you're just going to start with two pieces, and I'm going to put glue on one. Now, don't forget, hot glue dries very quickly, unfortunately, but this is like the best way to keep it all together. Is this my hot glue gun that's not been working? Please say no. Okay. I swear we have working tools here, you all. It's really, we really do. Okay, I'm hot gluing these together, y'all. Okay, I'm just going to, and you want to really line these up as good as you can. When you're using that hot glue, just be ready because it, it dries so fast. And you want to make sure everything's lined up. So look, we've got two glued together, and then I'm just going to kind of flatten it down line up the next one and i'm gonna apply my glue come on there we go okay it doesn't need to be super thick or anything like that line it up 
and while it's not hardened, you can still kind of scooch it around a little bit. Okay, sorry I'm not talking when I do this because like I really got to concentrate to get it on there straight. We understand. And listen, don't be disappointed if your first one's a little bit crooked. Just don't beat yourself up. It's kind of hard to get them. It, the hot glue is the biggest issue. I think you could use ATG on this, but I feel like the hot glue is a little bit more permanent. You can use ATG <clears throat> because my very, very, very first live that I ever hosted with MGL, I did an accordion Christmas tree. Oh, yes. Which was still, it's very, very similar to this, but I wanted it to have the honeycomb effect. Yes. So it was like part of it was taped together, part of it was not. Yes, I love that project actually. Yes. So you could use the ATG gun, um, I, but yeah, hot glue is going to be a little bit more permanent, I think. Paper crafting and adhesives are like such a tricky thing. Like trying to figure out what's the best adhesive for this specific project. Like sometimes HEG is better, sometimes just two way, like a zig pen will be better. I like hot glue for like sturdiness. I just feel like the hot glue really makes it really sturdy, I guess would be the best way. Okay, so I did four this way and attached them and then, then I flipped it over and now I'm taking the individual piece and attaching it to the left side, mainly because like sometimes you get gaps in this and it makes it really spaced out if you do all of them gluing to the right side, if that makes sense. So I'm just flipping it to try to space out the, the space distribution. I, hope, I feel like I'm not explaining, using my words correctly. What'd you say? <laughs> I flipped instead of, hold on, let me glue this okay. on, I can't talk. Okay, yeah. this is what I was saying. Uh, before, we had our little bundle on the right side, and I was gluing it to this side. So I was mm -hmm. taking my individual piece and gluing it this way. Mm -hmm. I have now flipped this over, and I'm gluing it to this side now. Because sometimes, if you're just a little bit off whenever you're gluing, it starts to get this weird gap in between them all. And so I found when I flipped it over that it kind of closes that gap in. Okay. If that makes sense. So I think the first time I explained that it was not nearly as clear. <laughs> so anyways, that's what I'm doing now. So just keep on trucking. We are making a beat. We're dropping the beat, people. Making an onion. Dropping the beat. We are dropping <laughs> the Christmas beat up in here. That's right. <laughs> cray cray. Okay. Cray cray. So they're all attached now, except for this last piece. So this is like the closing piece. So I'm just going to add some hot glue here. Okay. And then we're just going to close it. Ooh, okay. This is the best one I've done in terms of lining things up. So yay me for, for that. Okay, look how cute. Okay, love it. And you know what I didn't do? I didn't put our little jute twine on it, on the top here. I brought in some red twine, but I feel like that's not gonna match. So I'm gonna, well, I don't know if that's gonna pop out. Sorry, I'm looking for jute twine. Oh, we've got some of this. Okay, so you need to, you can use jute twine or like embroidery floss. Let me show you the different options. So this one, we use like a really skinny, um, not like a ribbon. This is kind of a rounded rope almost. And then a jute twine for this one. You can also use embroidery floss. You could use the stretchy, like elastic band would be you good. You could use fishing line. You yeah. could literally use whatever you have. Yeah, so I am gonna use this little piece of string and I should have attached this, but I got distracted because we were just chit-chatting. I should have attached this before my final straw, before my final attachment, if you will. So I'm just gonna take a small piece, okay? And what you need to do is sandwich it in between 
two of your pieces. Now, all of these are hot glued, so I'm just going to very carefully open one of these sections. I'm going to use an X-Acto knife. But normally, before you close this up, you would just add in a little string. So I am just literally putting this in here, you all. This is not the way. The way would be before I close it up to put your little string in, okay? So if you go to do these, make sure you put your little string in first. I'm just kind of adding hot glue in here and then pushing this in. Let me use this exacto knife to help me so I don't burn myself. Okay, so I got my little string in there. Sorry, I can't bend over and like get it down in there. So now that we've got that, we're good. We're done on the ornament portion, but we need to add our glitter. So for the next section, you're going to need a paintbrush. You're going to need your Elmer's glue and your glitter of choice. So what I'm going to do is just pour a little. You do not need a lot of glue, okay? This comes out quick. Just a little dab will do ya. And then I've got my glitter. Let me make sure this has been opened. It hasn't. We've never used this color. I'm hoping it pops really good on our onion colored ornament. And Is then it I make have... it look even more like an onion. Like the dark insides of a purple onion. Oh what? <laughs> what color? <laughs> Aren't the, like when you cut into a purple onion, oh. isn't the inside like you have your white layer and then like your light, like that color purple and then like a darker color? Yeah. yeah. I didn't mean to make an onion ornament, everybody. <laughs> it was totally unintentional. <sighs> okay, so I'm just going to take a small paintbrush and all you're going to need to do is go right along the edges of your ornament. And lucky for us, Elmer's glue doesn't dry super fast. So you can kind of work your way down. You could do a, a little bit bigger of a brush for this if you wanted to, just to cover more space. This is the one that we have. And I'm just kind of like tapping it as I go down, okay? So you don't want to like go in and start brushing like that. You want to kind of tap it. So we're like laying it on kind of thick, but we also don't want it to drip down our ornament. So I'm just laying it on and then we're going to sprinkle the glitter on top of that. This is my favorite part of this process. It's so pretty and worth it because it does take a minute. Is that brush too tiny? No. Okay. I mean, it's just taking a little bit longer, but it's really fine. I can try to go find another one. If you want to, you can. Okay. I won't be mad at you. Okay. I'll be and, right back. <laughs> and then on this plate, I'm going to sprinkle my glitter. Okay. We're using a lot of glitter. We're going to save this in the end. Okay. So don't, don't fret. All right. Okay. There's our first one. And we're just going to keep <clears throat> working our way down. It's already, I love that color with the purple. It looks so good. Okay, y'all, this is the one. This one, this brush right here, this is the Mac Daddy. I must have looked over it earlier because I was like, I know I had that earlier. So now I can really put this on a little bit better. You can see the small one was working, but this is just going to really put it on there for us. And like I said, you want to goop it on, but you don't want to drip. We don't want it to be drippy. And it may not look like a lot of glitter at first, but with the combination of doing every single edge, it really pops. It'll look super good. Okay. And then go back to our glitter plate. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. I told them, don't fret, we're not wasting this glitter. Never. I'm going to save the glitter, I promise. I love it. I'm here for the onion. I'm here for it. Meal, right? I love those. Yeah, me too. Okay. Or 
Y'all, this is it, our onion ornament. Now, once it dries, I can fix, you can see how I'm holding it this way because I want you all to see how the spacing is all kind of janky. We can go back and fix that once it's dried. But if you have one of these little ornament hangers, these are great to just kind of let it hang and dry. Yes. Um, I'm gonna actually, I try to hold it by like the non-glittered areas. I'm just gonna let this sit here and dry. Uh huh. And then I could take, after it's completely dried, take your little feather duster and dust all the extra glitter off and you're done. That's it. So Hey friends, welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. In today's video, not only do we have an amazing offer for you, but we are going to be making three DIY Christmas ornaments that you need to make this holiday season. The amazing offer that we have for you guys today is an opt-in offer where all you have to do is give us your email and you get 100 free cut files automatically. If you don't know who we are or what we do, Makers Gonna Learn is a craft education business where we bring you inspiration, motivation, and education to get your Cricut out of the box and master using it. If you decide that you want these 100 free cut files and you think, oh my gosh, this is so amazing, but you want to join the Makers Gonna Learn family, we offer so much more. We have thousands of cut files available on our website, as, as well as hundreds of fonts that are free to you. Not only do we have cut files and fonts, but we also have courses that you can take to help master your Cricut. Now I hope you're ready to go ahead and jump into our projects and start making these three DIY Christmas ornaments. Here we have a sample of what we're going to be making today. We have this cute little Jenga block ornament. We have a wood burned, wood round ornament, as well as a little shadow box, snow globe type ornament that we're going to be making. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the supplies for this or these ornaments, but we're gonna go one by one the supplies for each separate ornament. First, we're gonna start with the supplies for our Jenga block ornament. Now these are just the mini Jenga blocks that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Um, that's where we got these. I'm sure you can find some of these on Amazon, but we have the Jenga blocks that we're going to be using, as well as our red permanent vinyl. We have some white chalk paint that we're going to be painting the Jenga blocks with. We have our twine that we're going to be using for the hanger as well as the little jingle bells and wooden beads that we're going to thread onto that. We have just a plain piece of cardstock paper that we're going to be using as kind of like a backing for this to glue our jingle blocks to. And of course we're going to be using a light grip mat as well as Caesar transfer tape. Now for our next ornament, which is the wood round, of course we have the wooden blanks. Now these come from Amazon, and as you can tell, they don't have a hole in the top, so we do have to use a drill to drill the hole in the top if you want it to go through. If you don't want to use a drill, you would be fine just to hot glue this to the back, um, hot glue your twine to the back, that would be fine. For the actual wood burning portion, we are going to be using just some scrap permanent vinyl as well as torch paste. And what we're going to do is we will paint this on with our stencil down on our wood round, and then we are going to use our heat gun to heat that up and burn that into the wood. Of course, when cutting your stencil out of vinyl, you're going to need your light grit mat and some transfer tape. But we also have this sanding block. This is about, um, this is a very fine grit sanding block. We're going to give this a light sand. We're gonna give our wood round a light sand before we put on the torch paste. That way the torch paste can get in the rings of this wood round and really help give a nice even look. Finally, the supplies for our last ornament are the shadow box ornament. As you can see, I have already started another one with like different things on the inside. And this is the cool thing about this ornament is you really can customize it and make it however you want. The base of this ornament is we started with this Dollar Tree uh, it says magnet box. We found this in the school supplies. Um, so you can find, in, if you can find anything, any kind of box like this that has the clear opening in the front would work perfect for this ornament. Um, for this ornament, I have 
This is some glitter felt material. You can use cardstock in this ornament. We just use cardstock in the back. I just thought this one was a lot brighter, so I plan on using that for my little snowman ornament. To make my snowman, I just have three wooden beads that I'm going to paint and hot glue together. For this one, we just used a little bottle tree as well as some little fluffy um, batting for the snow and jingle bells. But for this one, we're going to use the flaky um, fake snow as well as our permanent vinyl that we're going to put on the front, our light grip mat, and transfer tape. Now that we've gone over all of the supplies, let's measure our ornaments so we know the dimensions that we can work with in Design Space. So let's start with this ornament. And what you want to do is you want to measure from inside to inside on the clear. So the clear space is what you want to measure because that's where our um, vinyl is going to go. So it looks like we have about three inches in diameter for this circle. So we're going to hop over into Design Space. We are going to grab a shape. I'm going to grab the circle and then I'm going to change that to three inches and then turn this into a guide. Now back over here we have this circle. Now it is not a perfect circle as you can see this way it looks to be about uh, three and a quarter but then when we turn it this way it's a little over three and a half so we are going to go with three and a quarter the smallest to be on the safe size side as you all know, natural wood like this a lot of times doesn't come perfectly symmetrical. So we are actually going to go with the three and a quarter measurement. So once again, we're going to hop back over here to design space. We are going to grab a shape, the circle. We are going to change this to 3.25. And then once again, change this into a guide. So we have our two circle ornaments in here as guides now. So now that we have the two circles, the guides in design space, we are going to assemble our Jenga block ornament. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of cardstock paper and I'm actually going to cut it pretty long um, because I want to make sure I have plenty of area to work with when placing these Jenga blocks. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of line these up on our cardboard or cardstock paper. Now, if you wanted to, you can have these all the same all the way across. You can stagger them, whichever one you want. But we're going to start out on one side and we are going to place our glue here. And then we are going to place our Jenga block down. And you really want to try to get it as straight as possible here because this is going to be the start of your ornament. Then we're just going to come in here, do another line of glue. Then I think I want to go down just a little bit with this one. Now we are working with seven of these in a row. However, you can do as many as you would like. It doesn't have to stop at seven. We just did seven to begin with. And as you can see, I have some extra over here. So if I wanted to do another one, I could, but you don't have to. What we're just going to do is I'm just going to come in here and cut the edge of that off. Now, as you can see, it's stuck there, but it still kind of bends this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to add some hot glue here and really adhere these Jenga blocks to each other. Now that we've got all of that glue down, I'm just going to come in here with our sanding block and kind of sand away some of that extra glue that we've got going on here, which will also give us a good layer to start with our paint. Now that we have that glued together, next step, I'm going to get my measurements. So we're working with about four and a half inches and we'll go with, um, about one and a quarter inch in height because you have to go from your lowest one on the top to your highest one on the bottom. So we'll go from here to here, which gives us about um, an inch and three quarter to work with. So we will hop over here into design space. We're going to grab a shape. 
we'll grab our square. We're going to unlock it. We said four and a half inches in width, so 4.5 in width. And we're going to go down to about 1.75 in height. And then once again, we are going to turn this into a guide. Now before we start actually putting our designs in our guides in design space, I'm going to paint this ornament so that it has plenty of time to dry while I'm working on that and cutting my vinyl. So first thing we're going to be working with the Starcraft chalk mineral paint and I'm going to paint our ornament, our Jenga block ornament next. So we're just going to take this chalk paint, now it doesn't have to be the Starcraft brand, and we're just going to give this ornament a nice even coat all the way across. Now we're really going for the distressed look with this, so you need to have a, make sure that it's covered, however, if you miss some spots, that just adds to the distressed look that we are going for. So we're just going to give this a good coating, and then after it's dry, we will actually just come back in here with our sanding block that we just used, and we may distress a couple places. So since we are going for the distressed look, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to go one way or the other with this. We're just making sure that we have a good coat on all sides that you can see. Now that that's painted, we're going to hop over into Design Space and size our designs for these ornaments and cut them with the Cricut. So for our first ornament, which was the shadow box ornament, I'm going to be using a cut file that says let it snow. So we are going to go to upload. I have already uploaded these from our website. This will be part of the 100 free cut files that you get. This is going to be our shadow box ornament. Then we are going to use the antlers for our wood burning and then the happy holidays for our Jenga block ornament. So we're gonna select all three of those and add those to canvas. Obviously this pulls up very, very large. So it has the happy holidays selected first. If you look up here at the top, this is actually unlocked. So we're gonna make sure we lock that. And then I'm going to size this down to three inches. Okay, then I'm going to move this over here. I actually sized all of these down on accident. Here is our let it snow, our antlers, and our happy holidays. So this is what I want to do with the happy holidays. I think that this would be great to kind of move around and manipulate so that holidays can be larger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup both of these. I'm going to move my happy over here, select my holidays, make it larger so that you can see it better, and then maybe even turn our happy a little bit. I might size this down just a smidgen, move it back over, and I really think this is going to look good on our Jenga block, so what we're going to do from there, let's actually size this down just a smidgen more pull it down, and then what we're gonna do is we are going to select both of them, happy and holidays, and then we are going to weld those together. That way that cuts exactly like that to fit on our Jenga blocks. Next, uh, this is the deer antler. We are just going to size it to fit our wood round ornament. So I think that looks pretty good. And then we are going to size our Let It Snow. I actually want it kind of toward the side because I want you to be able to see my um, snowman over here in the corner. So I really like the placement there. So once you have done that, you are going to be ready to cut. We are cutting this on a Maker 3. However, you can cut this, really you can cut this on any um, Cricut. You can cut this on a Joy, on an Explorer series machine or a maker series machine. We just have a maker here in our studio, so we're going to click make it. 
because these are all three different colors on our mat, they are going to cut different, which works out perfect for us because I am cutting them all three on different color vinyl. So first up, we have our Happy Holidays, which is gonna go on our Jenga blocks. So we are going to click Continue. We are going to select our device that is connected via USB. I'm going to cut this on the premium vinyl removable mat with default pressure. We're going to load this into our Cricut. Now one good thing about chalk paint is it tends to dry pretty quick, but I'm needing this to dry very quick. So I'm just gonna take a heat gun and we're gonna run this over this chalk paint really quick to give it a good dry, to make sure it's really good and dry. Once that is good and dry, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab our sanding block and then I'm just gonna come in here and kinda give this a little bit of a distressed look. Now our Cricut has cut our Happy Holidays. I'm going to take it off the mat. And we will weed that in just a second. This is a good way to really test your efficiency is doing multiple projects at the same time. So before I weed that, up next I have the Let It Snow coming up. So I'm going to add this vinyl to my mat. I'm going to make sure that it is burnished down really well. Now, for a high shine vinyl like this, I really like using a rolling burnishing tool. I feel like if I use the squeegee burnishing tool, it gives me a lot of like scrapes on the vinyl that I don't personally like. So with this vinyl, I do like using this rolling burnishing tool. Now I'm gonna hop over back into Design Space. I'm going to browse all material. I'm going to scroll down to the vinyl and I am going to select holographic vinyl. From there, I'm going to load it into our Cricut. And before I cut that, I'm actually gonna come back to Design Space I'm just gonna give this more pressure just because I think I'm, this holographic vinyl can sometimes be pretty tricky to work with, so I'm just gonna give it more pressure before I hit the play button, and then I will hit that play button. While that is cutting, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to weed out our happy holiday, holidays, we almost lost our S. So I'm going to hold that. We're gonna weed the middle of this out. And then we're just gonna place this bad boy back down. Now that that is weeded, I'm just going to cut my transfer tape, lay it down, burnish it, Pull it up and place it on our ornament. And we will finish the hanger here in just a minute. So we're going to move this to the side. We're going to unload this from our Cricut. Okay, so one thing I want to show you guys, this vinyl that I'm using is actually a tech wrap vinyl, and I continually forget that they have a film over top of their vinyl, which is great for this holographic vinyl because the film protects it from getting scratched. So I forgot to take that off. So if you are using tech wrap vinyl, make sure you take this film off before you cut. The good part about it is because where I added more pressure, I'm pretty sure this still cut through beautifully. 
So we're try still trying to take this film off of the front. Okay, so it did not cut any of it. So what we're gonna do, we're just going to place this back on our mat and we'll just cut it on this other corner. Once again, using our burnishing tool to roll this on so that we do not get any scratches on this vinyl. And then we're just going to go back and design space back to this one, uh, browse all material. We will type in holographic, holographic vinyl. We're gonna put it on more pressure and we're gonna send that through to cut again. So while that is cutting, we are going to prepare our ornament. As you can see, I have already added our elements, but I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. So first thing, I took my sparkle material, I turned it over, and all I did was trace that around on the back, and I hand cut that out. And you can see where I did this. It was just easier to trace this on the back and cut it, hand cut it out instead of sending that through the Cricut. Once I cut that out, I placed it in the back, I hot glued that down and then I started making my little snowman. Now this is where I really want you guys to get creative. I made a snowman out of wooden beads that we had sitting around because I didn't want to necessarily order anything new just specifically for just one ornament. So all you do is you're gonna take your wooden beads and I hot glued them down so we'll start with this one. Add our bead there. And then added hot glue to this one. Placed it down for the top. And then I just painted our little snowman white. After I painted him white, I cut out a little top hat out of cardstock paper, glued him in there, and added our fake snow. So you really can do whatever you want in these ornaments. If you want to put a picture on the back, that would be great. Um, we had a bottle tree, so we wanted to make a snowy scene with the Christmas tree in it for this one. So really this one is up to your interpretation. We just wanted to give you a couple different options. So after you have made your inside for your ornament, we are going to place our top back on. We're going to grab our true control knife and I'm just going to slice this corner out. And then we are going to weed that. Okay, so now that this is weeded, we actually had to go back. I wanted to let you guys know, for this holographic tech wrap vinyl, we had to go back and cut this again on permanent vinyl. I think I cut it on the permanent vinyl pearl with more pressure, and it weeded a lot easier than the first time. So now we're just going to add our transfer tape and pull this up. And then bring this over here and we are going to place it here. And once that is down, if you want to, you can glue the front of this on there. But to add our little hanger, what we're gonna do is we are going to take our drill we are going to very slowly, you want to make sure your ornament is the right side up. Very slowly, we are going to take our drill and just drill through the top, pull it back out. We are then going to take our ribbon, put it together and thread it through. 
this is one reason why I don't necessarily like gluing it down, especially until you are completely finished. So we're going to pull this through. I'm just going to tie this off. Then once we have tied that, we're going to come back in with our scissors, cut off this excess, pull it to the top, put our front back on, and there you go. Now for our final ornament, we are going to do the wood burning ornament. We are going to load our vinyl into our Cricut. We are cutting this on removable mat, default pressure. And while that is cutting, we are going to give our wood round a nice sand on the front, get our stencil off of the Cricut, and then cut it. Now we're going to weed this out. Now one thing you need to remember, because this is a stencil, we are weeding out the negative space. So now we're just going to once again grab our transfer tape. And this transfer tape has actually been used. This is our third time using it in this video alone. So we're going to grab our transfer tape, burnish this down, pull up this design, and place it on our wood round. Now we're just going to make sure the edges of this stencil are nice and tight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in with a paintbrush and some torch paste and we're going to give this a nice even layer. Now the important thing with torch paste is you don't want it to be um, very thick. You want it to be a nice even thin layer to get really good crisp clean lines. Otherwise, if it is too thick, like that area right there was way too thick, so scooping it up and moving it over, if you don't get it, if it's not super thin, all it's going to do is like bubble up on your um, wood round that you are doing, and it's just going to look like charcoal. So a nice, good, thin layer. Once you have that layer down, we're going to close our torch paste back up, stick our, our brush in water, then we are going to pull our stencil up off of our wood round. From there, we're going to grab our heat gun. I like to start out on low, let it get heated up, and then you can turn it to high, but we're not going to get super close. We're going to still stay pretty far away from this. And then the, the thing about this is doing a slow heat. You don't want it to get too hot too fast. So we're just going to burn this and you can see how quickly it burns. And once you have finished, one thing about these wood pieces is it may warp just a little bit. As you can see, the heat kind of warped that. If you have the time to do it on a lower heat setting, you can and it will not warp as much. Um, but once you have done that, we are going to come in with our drill. We are going to put a hole through the top. back it back out and then we are going to add our little twine detail and then you will tie it off. And then to finish off the last one, if you want to thread on some jingle bells you can or the wood beads, but I'm just going to show you how we finish this off. So what we'll, all we're going to do from the back we're going to take our hot glue gun. We are going to glue our piece of twine on here. I'm going to add some glue to the top. 
Same for this side. Place it down, add some glue to the top, and you're finished. I know this has been a lot. We have done a lot of different things. They are simple things, but it has still been a lot. I really hope that you enjoyed this. These DIY ornaments are so cute and so easy to make. And really, you can make them with things that you probably already have laying around your house. Now, don't forget, for that opt-in offer, for you to get 100 free cut files if you are not a Makers Gonna Learn member, all you have to do is click the link below, give us your email, and you get 100 free cut files sent to your inbox automatically. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, subscribe to our channel, hit that bell notification so that you don't miss out on any handmade holiday projects that we have coming your way. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye! And in today's training, we're going to go into really building out this file um, and taking it from just a basic um, tile like file and snowflake we're going to build something super great now in today's training i'm going to prompt you when to write down certain things if you're taking notes because i again wasn't kidding i got my notes here um, so that's super super fun but let's go over supplies today because it is minimal and I think you will be blessed. So if we're overhead, this is the tile that we have picked up. This is linked down below. So a direct link to Lowe's. And what I love is you're gonna find a link to the size of tile this is um, at the amazing, amazing Makers Learn site. So we have turned this into a file and when you upload it, it is the um, awesome, awesome size. So that is super, super good. It is amazing and we are so excited for that. So I'll talk you through that. You're going to need a sheet of vinyl. We are creating a whole different vibe from our green and red here. Mm -hmm. This is one style. We're going to go and mix all of these colors together. So our box is made from this. Our uh, snowflake is gonna be made from, what would you even call this beautiful vinyl, Lauren? Um, that I think, is I'm pretty sure that's tech wrap vinyl. Okay, well, so what I would you have, call this color? Ah, silver holographic. Yeah, it's, it's like really a good. matte silver holographic. Yeah, almost. it's awesome. So you're gonna love that. It's gonna be good. We're gonna work with it today. You're gonna need some transfer tape, vinyl of your choice, cardstock of your choice. I have a hot glue gun as well as ATG. A lot of people have asked about my ATG gun. Is it easy to use? I will say this has a learning curve, but. If you're willing to learn the curve, you are going to get reap the benefit. I have used an ATG advanced tape glider since 2010, and here's the deal. I have a video that will walk you through how to change this out. So you can Google how to change my ATG gun tape, and I'll teach you how to do it. Here's the thing. When you look at how much adhesive you get with an ATG gun compared to those small runners, with this, you're going to save so much money buying an HEG gun and getting these cartridge replacements rather than those small little adhesive runners that feel and look like you have more confidence. All I'm saying, worth the time, worth the sweat, worth the investment because it'll help you and it makes you feel like a legit paper crafter. Um, so that's super fun. We have some ribbon. We're going to use hot glue to add the ribbon to the back. We've got a mat. It's really that simple, my friends. It's that simple when you're able to get these supplies together. Your paper of choice, I'm using a scoring stylus to create the score lines for my box. That is awesome. Yes. Um, Today's share screen, I have quite a bit of my little tools here. Yeah. We don't need near as many. We're gonna kinda simplify Let's... some of these out. Um, so that is super fun. I'm actually gonna keep my red, I'm gonna leave these. Um, so this is great. I'm gonna show you guys how cool it is. When your Maker's Gonna Learn member, you get to upload all of your files to Design Space. And we've talked about this this week already. What's cool is when you are a member, you download the file, you upload it to Design Space one time, and you get it forever, right? That's so cool. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna scroll through. We can kind of peek around what we've been designing, what we've been doing here, um, just to see like what's up, right? right. Um, so we're gonna scroll down. I'm gonna select my snowflake, because I know I've already uploaded it. I'm going to scroll down and be like, oh, I need my tile and I need my box. So, so if you click add to canvas, sorry about that. No, go ahead. Um, if you go add to canvas, 
you're going to see this is your box. We're going to do that last. We're going to start by building with the snowflake and the tile. But if you are like, I don't really understand like what this works looks like, works like, um, you're going to see how easy it is. So once you're a member, you have unlimited downloads here. Um, so it is so, so good. Um, you can see you would download the tile ornament. You would download um, this little Erebus tile here, both of those files, and you can go through. You don't even have to pick our snowflake. All of these files are linked down below. So look at all these snowflakes to choose from. They're awesome. I really like this snowflake, but you can choose whichever one. So download it, upload it, easy peasy. Warren, what were you going to say? There were a couple people, I was going to say something which you addressed. Okay, perfect. But there were a couple people that said they have these tiles at Home Depot as well. They do. Yeah. Let me preface all of this by saying, yes, they do. We found they're smaller, though. Okay. They are not the exact same kind. Right. This file specifically yes. is the one, the brand from Lowe's. Yes. And that brand is linked below. And if you go to the Lowe's website, right. it's the Satori, S-A-T-O-R-I. Okay. And this file comes in the exact size yep. as those Satori Arabesque yep. files. Now, do you, right, so what, we're, what she's saying, to reiterate, we have customized our box. We have customized our tile file. When you upload those files into Design Space, you are not going to resize them. If you are choosing to get another tile, that's fine. We're here for that. Right. That's totally that's totally cool. But ours is designed to work with Lowe's because they're a little bigger. But here's what I want to let you all know. You will have to measure. You will have to resize. You will have to test. And it is going to be so, so good. So what I'm telling you for the ones that are like, you know what? I'm going to Lowe's. I'm ordering it from Lowe's. Anything like that. What I want you to know. Do not, my friends, do not let it resize on you. Be very diligent, vigilant, anything like that, um, to leave it the size it is. That's my disclaimer. Are you all ready? Let's take a look. Let's jump in. It is going to be so good. So here we are today. We have our tile in here, and we have our snowflake. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and duplicate this, our best tile. We want to have a safety here because we're about to do quite a few different functions with this um this one so this is our safety like over here i'm actually going to change this color so we all know it's the safety one um i'm going to change it to dark gray that'll be perfect so this is our safety one over in the corner now here's our snowflake now first like how am i going to line anything up here let's move this snowflake to the front click arrange send to the front Bada beam, bada boom. Love it. All right. Now, we're going to size our snowflake just a little bit so everything fits, everything looks good. Now, that is so, so good. What we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and do something a little bit different, Lauren. Yeah, that's where this I was going to. This is like we've got, if you're not paying attention, come close to the screen. You've got to watch. So typically, we mm -hmm. use offset. Mm -hmm. Typically, we do that. Do we need a slice first? We're, no, we're still, I think you, you're still going to want to use offset Heck first. Yeah. And then we will do. Yeah. So, yeah. but what I want to explain to you all is this file, typically, we would do an offset. But we already know it is the exact size of our tile. Okay? So we're not going you know, to do an offset today. Because we are going to do a, um, what is the technical term? An inset? An inset. Just an yes. inset. So look right here. Come overhead with me, just so we have a visual. Are you all picking up why we're going to do an inset? This is our end goal today. The tile is going to represent our gray, our gray tile. And then we're going to start building and creating this beautiful um, little decal. So we're going to make an inset. You all have may never made an inset today. All right? If you've never made an inset, have no fear. Let's do it together. So let's jump over. We're going to select our green layer. We're going to click Offset. And today we're going to use the hard corners. Typically we use rounded corners. Hard corners. 
And to do an inset, all you do is you type negative 0.15 is what we're going to use today. So just like that, we have now did our inset. Okay, we're going to press apply. Now we have got our inset. So that just like this, we are going to go and click our Snowflake file right here. We're going to change that Snowflake file to white. So now that it's white, what we're going to be able to do is we are going to select our uh, offset. Okay, so if we click our black offset now while selecting our white snowflake, let's press command and our offset, we now have two layers selected. Now, Lauren, mm -hmm. this is where with all these new design space functions, right? Let's go Reference over our guide. Let's go overhead and let's look around at what other tools we could use in addition to a slice, right? right? Mm -hmm. So we all are very familiar with what slice does. I've always explained it, it's a cookie cutter. It is cutting, mm -hmm. okay? And just like this, I can cut things out of circles, okay? Well, Lauren, we are doing a few different things yes. that are a little bit different. Uh -huh. So at first, I'm really curious, what would it look like for intersect? So what's gonna happen, it, it, that would work beautifully you are still going to be able to get your intersect. So let's show them what that looks like. Yeah, let's do it. Um, but then you are still gonna have to go in and add your ins another inset to get your edge. Yes, so would we wanna duplicate the black layer let's first? Let's duplicate our black layer first. Heck yeah, we are. We're gonna duplicate this black. Remember, cause it's smaller, guys, do you see? This black layer is smaller. Does that not look beautiful? Yes, that, I love it. I love it. that size. Love it. Amazing, okay. okay. so. Now that we have this extra inset, how cool, we're gonna select our what snowflake. Uh huh. We're gonna press command if you're on Mac and press your green. Nope. Or press your, black. your black, thank you. Yep. Your black inset. Right. And now come on down to this area where weld was, we now have combined, open it up. And which one are we going to do? Are we going to do intersect? Yes, you're going to do intersect. <gasps> All right, let's click it and see what happens. Da da da, da da, boom. boom, boom. So normally, let's go back and talk about this real quick. Like this, if we had sliced this, yes, we would have had th two or three additional layers. You would have had four. Layers, layers, period. Period. If you would have sliced, wow. you would have had four layers. So what happens Ugh. is we, if we would have sliced, we would have gotten rid of the outside of the snowflake. Yep. And then what we would have had to done, we would have to come back in and select it. Clean it up. Both of the, both of the slices on that inset and then weld them back together because we wanted to keep the inset. Yeah. But it's now, a lot. now with the intersect, because you're having a, let's say you Well, have, we don't have to worry for this specific project, right. but traditionally, because uh -huh. we're doing multiple, <laughs> if, if we were doing this project without Intersect, there's so many layers. Yeah. But now that we duplicated our Intersect, mm -hmm. we're about to align them center. Yep. I'm going to probably change my snowflake back to what? Change your snowflake like, back to white. Yeah, let's go back and do this because what I love is just the amount that it simplified that. Like, it's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. So now that we're here, we're going to go to white. And now we are going to select our intersect and we're going to select our black offset and we're going to click align center. Okay. So they're centered up. They actually don't look centered to me. Do you see that? They don't. It looks like it could go up a little bit. Yeah. Just click your that. white snowflake and hit the up arrow yeah. key. Yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. So there you go. <gasps> All right. So we've got this here. Mm -hmm. Now, what so we function should we be looking at now? Well, right here, we don't need a function. Right. We're just making sure that they line up properly. Yes. So now we're going to zoom back out. Oh, yeah. Unselect your snowflake layer. We're leaving our snowflake. Bye, snowflake. <laughs> so we have our 
off or our inset, the black layer. Yep. Select it. We're going to grab our black inset. And then we're going to grab our green tile. Yep, right here. Select both. Center them. Look at this. Align, center. Now, because we want the edge, if you wanted to stop there and just cut out your snowflake and place it on the tile, you can go ahead and grab it and move it down to your gray yeah, layer. Yeah, like look, this could be, this is you a could fine be stopping point. Yes. This is a total, fine, beautiful, beautiful, like, stopping Love it. point. Right? Like, look at this. This is good, but remember, here at Makers Learn, we don't stop at good, we go to great. Right. So if you're like, whoa, this is a lot for me, guess what? This is totally fine. Yes. All right, go for it. Rewatch this, you'll get here, easy peasy. Now we're going to go Back to advanced. our green and black. We're here. We're going to select both of those layers. Yep. You're going to go back down to combine. Yep. And from here, what you can do I is mean, you can do the... Exclude. Ooh. <gasps> Let's do exclude. Okay. One, two, three. Exclude. Up. Oh. Up. Oh. Now and grab. Keep that selected. That's yeah. what we need. Yeah. Now select your snowflake. Hi, snowflake. Now you got to go back and select them both. We're going to select them both. Center them. Align, center. If you guys don't use align, center, it's a game changer. <gasps> then go to combine. Well, hold up. We got to look here because it still thinks that snowflake needs to move up a little bit. So you need to make sure that your snowflake touches your green layer. For yeah, sure. so look. So see all of these snowflakes are touching around the green layer. <gasps> and then we're going to go Ooh. down to combine. Combine. And unite. Oh, well, they're not well, both select. selected. Now. Combine. And unite. Y'all. Um, we have, yeah, we, we have, have just literally used, used three of the four new functions today. So are you all who are you, like, let's just come back to me. Come back. Like, let's, let's, let's talk. This is a lot. This is a lot. This is the first, I want to just acknowledge, this is the first video here at Makers and Learn. We have made a full craft using three of the new design space functions. If you're lost, that is okay. Right? That is okay. It, this right here, the ones that, if you're celebrating, if you're celebrating, you know how complicated mm -hmm. slicing gets. All the extra layers, all of this, all of that. It's a lot. So, rewatch it. Rewatch this. We are all going to get better at this as it goes. Right. And until until you understand how to use each each of these new functions i want to give you permission to just stay at where you're at and slowly add one or two for me and i'll let lauren answer too for me mm -hmm. the easiest one for me to grasp was intersect mm -hmm. intersect made sense for me mm -hmm. and the others i was like mm -hmm. like what right. but this project as you walk through it, as you work through it, we'll see if you continue the way originally through slicing and hacking the system, very different. So, Lauren, what was your easiest design space function to pick up and grasp? Um, really and truly, um, after working with like Illustrator and different yeah. things, like I think that e we if you had to so, pick one. One, you not. You not is the same thing as well. It's just undoable. Love it. There you go. You all literally already know how to use you not. You not is weld. Yeah. The only difference is you can ununite it. Which even is after you saved a project. Praise God. Like praise that's God. so good. You can ununite that. that even after a project is saved. Maybe yeah. you've worked on it. You've left it alone. You're coming back a week later. Sure. You're like, I don't want this together anymore. Like, what was I thinking? Let me go and ununite this. Yes. We're yes. divorcing it. We're divorcing <laughs> those two things. It's not a union anymore. Oh. So that was probably the easiest. The yeah. next easiest was, like you said, is intersect. Because that is basically you, when you go to slice and you want that one thing on the inside. Yeah. Then that's Crazy. all you're going to end up with. And I will say the two hardest ones for me, like if you were had me on the spot and you were like, Tanner, tell me why I need to use exclude, win, and subtract. Those for me are the hardest ones that I will have not have trouble. It will take real life projects like this 
to push me through, to get me to use them, to understand how to do it, and mm -hmm. it's going to be really good. But this right here, y'all, to recap, simplified the layers, simplified the stress. Yeah. You get to see what needs to be done before, you get to see if it worked or not. Right. When you slice, you're like, well, is this, did this work? <clears throat> right. <laughs> so it will be different. I do want to encourage anyone. Alicia has a beautiful, amazing video slowly walking you through design space functions. We'll be adding more support to our members uh -huh. starting with this book. Um, for you all, we'll be using them in real life projects like this one. It's going to be awesome. It is a lot to learn, Marie, but we yeah. love it and it's awesome. So. Let's head back over to Design Space and take a look at where we're at. So let's show them. I'm just looking at this up here. And, you know, there's a couple areas that doesn't that does, does not look perfect. Yeah, so I we did. have united this. So go and show them how you can ununite this and maybe manipulate oh, that snowflake around Lauren. and try to get it back to where it needs to be. You Lauren, get what I'm saying? I do. So we're so. just selecting the one, that one. Yep. Go to Combine. Look at this, y'all. Are you are you all focusing? Now you Look, can un you not. Guys. Guys. I'm about to undo this and it's like a finished project. Uh-huh. Undo you not. <gasps> and now it's two separate layers again. <gasps> so if this happens to you, because this is one where it could be tricky, go back and select your snowflake. So yes. if they're both are all selected right snowflake. now. Snowflake. Whoa. Nope. Go back to the top. The top nope. one. Look at that. So it's all confusing now, but then look, we're going to click on the offset result. Boom. Mm -mm. Wait, I, let me click on. Here, let's click on our snowflake. No. Uh -uh. Where is my It's layer? on down one, on up one, right, right there. Correct. Oh my gosh. There Perfect. it is. Look now at that. I would use my arrow keys to mm -hmm. move it over to the right. And then. We're going to size it up a little. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Let's just size, size it up it. a just little. A hair. Okay, and then we can move, move it over it back to, the, to left. the left so that they're all touching and then oh, reunite yeah. them again. Well, huh. That is one thing, and somebody did say um, that the center button since the update seems to not be as center as it used to be. Uh, yeah, I, I, agree, I, with I agree with that. It doesn't get center, and honestly, after the update, my offset feature was a little different took me so long. Mm -hmm. I literally, I was making a project and I was trying to add an offset and it was buffering for, for like so five long. minutes. And I was just like, you know what? I don't even need to offset on this yeah. project. Forget yeah. it. Yeah. So this actually, we do have a little here, but the bottom is cleaned up. So we fixed yeah. half right. of the project. But what I do like to see here Unfortunately, now see if you weld it. If I was it about to it. see if we could weld yeah. it or contour it. So now let's go. We have this file. We love it. It's great. We're going to click on. Hmm, hold on. Let me see. Let's just select all of this here. Combined. So we can't really weld it because it's only one layer. Okay. That's interesting. So these are new thoughts that we have to work around. You could do. Um, is there another way to offset? Oh, I wonder if we did a small offset, would that fix it? That's a little, mm, it would create new issues, create new problems. Yeah. So this right here, not being able to contour um, in this section, may be something they'll work on updating sooner, um, thinking about and whatnot. Well, the good thing is just looking at oh, that. Oh, someone said merge layers. Let's see what that does. Yeah. So now that we've merged it, we can contour it. Yep. Lauren, I love it. So like, look at this. Let's zoom in here. I'm for sure. So we just merged the layer. Great idea. Where have you been all my life? Like this. You're going to have to scroll over. Well, it won't let me. It won't let you? Oh, there it let me scroll down. Well, that won't let me no scroll sense. over. It's so okay. We'll zoom just out. Looking, just oh, looking look, look, at look. it from I the can, screen. I can click on it. It looks layer. like it's not going to allow you to like contour that those little marks out that it might just be a little cut, yeah. but it'll still be together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So these are just, again, new interesting thoughts as you, you know, build your project and do all these fun things. Um, we're going to scale this down just a hair, and then we get to center these up, arrange, or excuse me, align, center. Um, and that's just for visual effect. Right. So there we go. 
Look at that. Look at that. Still beautiful, still awesome, and it is so, so good. Awesome. Okay, now we have that. We're going to move on over. Y'all, this is easy. So simple. I don't even want to stress you all out about it. I'm deleting out all of this. Delete. Um, and we're going to zoom in over here. Okay, so let me delete these. This is our box. How many of us have been able to um, utilize cutting and like paper before? Because this is so simple. We're going to hide the green and white layer. The green and white layer is meant to be for extra support of the box. You don't have to do that. It's just extra support of the box, so super simple. I'm gonna hide that out. You could cut those in different colors to support, um, super simple. And again, here's our box. Now, we have here um, the lines. So there's two line layers um, here that we need to turn this from cut lines into score lines. And I'm gonna zoom in so we can really take this in here for new paper crafters. If you've never made a box, y'all, this is an easy box to make. It looks confusing, it looks overwhelming. All you need to know, right now, these lines are to cut. How we know that? They are, they are straight. Okay, straight lines mean they're cut lines. So let's click on right here. You can see these are all of our score lines. It says basic cut. Go to basic cut and click on dun, 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 score. Look at this. I'm going to leave it on the screen here. Take a look at this and look at the straight lines. And then you can click on score. And now they're dashes. Yay, they're dashes. Love it. Now, let's look over here. This is what's cool about SVGs. And you get 7,000 of them when you become a member. And mm -hmm. if you love this training, if you love what we do here, you're going to love being a member. So great day to join. Uh, Cindy Ann. I was about to say, yes, you can. Because uh, Lauren was just, on a ladder. I just, I was on a big old <laughs> 10 foot ladder yesterday putting up a tree. Wink, wink. Oh my God. Going to be putting up another tree this weekend. Woohoo. So look, guys, we've got our two score lines. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't, there's not a way to automatically assign it to be a score line that we found um, for you guys. So you that's the only edit you do to the file. Mm -hmm. Now, what we want to double, triple check is that when we press make it, that these score lines transfer over, okay? So look, the score lines are on its own mat. That is not what we want. Do you have to have a scoring stylus to make boxes? Not exactly, but you need a scoring wheel or a scoring stylus to make the easiest box. And yes. you'll see why it's awesome. Everybody's saying they're intimidated by boxes. You guys are gonna be blown away. Oh yeah. Blown away. So all we wanna do, select these layers. We're gonna press attach. Okay, attach. Now, these score lines are gonna stay right where they are for this project. Let's click make it again. Let's click on the map. Let's click confirm. Come down here, look at this. You don't need wow. to weld them. So Annette said we need to weld them. You don't need to weld no. them because then it wouldn't work. Yeah. You just need to attach with score lines and your uh, box on like basic cut. I have a bad news for us. It's gonna, we're gonna need the 12 by 12. We need 12 by 12 card I stock. will go grab that. Or can you just move it down? You can't, mm -mm. you can't no, manipulate. No, we only have 11 inch paper, y'all. Okay. This is sad. We we picked out some really cool paper. I'm grab, listen, let me hang that color and I'll get one <laughs> We'll similar. see what we can get. Um, so that is where we're at today, my friends. What do you guys think? I'm going to click cancel real fast and move some layers around. Um, just because we can simplify it and show you how easy this is. So um, I'm going to keep these right here. This one looks good. Um, they all look good, but we're just going to delete some of these out. I'm going to hide these. Um, do, 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 do. Beautiful. Okay, so this is what you should get to. You should have your, um, you should have your tile and actually we're not even using the green layer. Guys, this is just for reference, okay? Delete. This is your layers of your cardstock layer and then your vinyl layer. So the white represents your vinyl, the red represents your cardstock. Are you guys picking up what I'm putting down? It's so good. Will it still cut out the center of the box, Teresa? Yes. Yes, it will still cut that out. 
Are you going to put acetate on the lid? You totally are welcome to. You are so welcome to. Um, if I was selling it, I totally would. What is the best thickness for paper for boxes? 80 to 110 pound cardstock. Yes, heavy cardstock is the best for boxes. I'm going to give you some Y'all, if you're loving, thank you. If you're loving, loving, loving this project, go ahead, drop me a heart emoji and so much fun. Tanner, can you do boot camp once a month? Julie, honey, I cannot. That would be. I wish we like, had the I wish we capacity. could. I wish we could. Five full days of two hour live shows are wild. These yep. happen quarterly. So these are free. They're fun. They're awesome. Um, we do. Actually, you're going to get blessed and get one next month, too. So you're going to get one in December. Yeah. Um, and then we do them, and we do one for March, uh -huh. for National, for Craft, National month. Craft Month. We d do, a, do summer a summer and a fall and then winter. So, yeah, we, we rotate around. So good. So here are two pieces of material. That's what's so cool about this. Y'all, this is all your material you need. Are you picking this up? Vinyl, cardstock, tile. Vinyl, cardstock, tile. Look and at all ribbon. these emojis and ribbon. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yes, the video will be able to replay after the live. Yes. This will say on YouTube, so you can go back and yeah, you can go back re -watch and rewatch it. Now, for our friends, if you are using 80 pound cardstock, remember that layer, those extra layers the box came with. I would use those to reinforce it 100. percent So yes. totally do that. So yay! All right, y'all, let's press make it. Let's bring this together. We're doing great. You guys are such a good group today. I'm so happy to get to hang out with you. I mean, Lauren, they just learned I know. a lot. And they're about to learn more because I'm about to have you show them how they can add a special um, setting for their vinyl because Tech Wrap Vinyl takes a special setting. Well, I'm so excited for that. So it's going to be amazing. So look. I just now, once you pulled that up and I said hey, that's Tech Wrap Vinyl earlier <laughs> and I realized what machine we were working with, well, I have not added it to that machine. This so. will be fun. Well, we'll teach them how to do it because if this is Tech Wrap and you're interested in learning, yes. this will be perfect. And plus, I really think this is a great skill to have in your back pocket, yes. especially when you are testing different materials. So good. This way you can go in and manually manipulate your set pressure settings for right. your materials. All right, so let's let's just talk about it. So we're at the set base material. Right. So does anyone here say, you know, sometimes these settings Cricut develop don't like not perfect for me. Like you feel like you're a misfit. Well, guess what? Let's share with you how you could do that. Yes. Let's click browse all material. Uh-huh. And there's a small button. Very small. Down in the left corner, uh huh, it says material settings. Yes. Click on it. Boom. So here you can actually look at all of the pressure settings for every single material that Cricut no has. No way. Right. So if you scroll all the way down to the very you bottom. You want to cut some cashmere? <laughs> I don't think we're cutting cashmere today. Uh, cranberry, cambra, cranberry, chambray. Uh, chambray. <laughs> y'all, if you only knew the things I pronounce. Actually, you do. Um, duck cloth, yeah. duct tape sheets. Just go ahead and scroll all the way down to the Sorry, bottom. Sorry, I'm just taking it all in. You're <gasps> go down to your add new Stop material. Stop it. Stop it. We're obviously going to name this tech wrap. wrap. Then is, this is where you can put if your settings tie. in. Okay. Now, Lauren, I'm going to ask you a question. Right. How do we, as a group, know what the settings should be. Because I did not find this. So if you order Tech Wrap Vinyl, yep. they send you a little piece of paper. No, they don't. That tells you the pressure and of that course it should we, be on. Of course we threw it I'm, I missed it. I was like, I don't you need You don't this. need instructions. Toss I've worked it. with vinyl before. Right. Okay. So, so they say that their normal vinyl, see, I always cut it. I actually cut it on something. I can't remember what I cut it on with more pressure and it, at times would cut beautifully, at mm -hmm. other times would not. I so think it's machine dependent. It is machine dependent. This is one way that you can ensure that your yeah. machine is the same every time. Okay, so what number? 185. 185, not We're a hair setting above. it. Well, they say you can set it between, there's like, you know, 10 pound or 10 whatever yeah. PSIs that you can set yes. it between. Okay. I found the sweet spot was 185. I love that. So let's click save. Uh huh. <gasps> Now, they do have a different setting for their glitter. You all, I think it's like up read in the 200s. Your, read your material. Read your you material, the stuff that they send you with material. So, so now I'm going to click browse go. and I'm going to look. Can we search? You can tech? search tech wrap. <gasps> I, I, yeah, guys, I added that. I'm going to like give it a little star. Like, you added that. Boom. 
We added that. Lauren, blessing the group today. How about it? I'm just I'm just trying to bring my blessings forward. <laughs> All right, y'all. Let's look at the Cricut. Um, if you have a Cricut Maker, it'll be a Cricut button. If you have a Explorer or Maker 3, um, it's a play button. Press that. Look at this beautiful reference guide. Y'all, after all of this design. So, I want you to try this project. It is under a dollar. You cannot tell me you can't do it. Go to Lowe's, make it happen, make a variation of it. You could even, guys, we give you the the base layer. So like, let's say, let's say your objection to me right now is that I don't have a Lowe's tanner, I can't have it. Y'all, you can make this with cardstock, chipboard, anything because we have this as a cut file. You don't mm -hmm. need this. You don't need the top. You can merge the vinyl onto cardstock, mm -hmm. vinyl onto chipboard. Mm -hmm. So much fun. Yay, I love it. You guys are awesome. Such a great group today. So somebody did ask on the scoring yes. wheel when to use the double versus single. For this one, I would use the single. It would be single. Now I notice even though I have the option to use a scoring wheel, even though I do own a scoring wheel, I actually prefer a stylus because the stylus can go in clamp A, the scoring wheel has to share clamp B. So that's and, your personal preference. And the stylus works with the Explore or the Maker yes. series. And it's more And affordable. it's a lot cheaper. <laughs> I mean, it's a no-brainer. So here we are on our next material. Um, first of all, since this is on the mat, if you're new here, which we have a lot of newbies, um, I always cut or I weed on the mat. So let me just teach you this process. This is worth its weight in gold. This is your third hand, your Cricut mat is your third hand to allow you to weed better. So I cut the excess off. Look at all this vinyl we've saved. This will be on another project. And Lauren is the queen at saving. Mm -hmm. uh, so she will for sure find other uses for this. You no better worry. believe it. Now, look at this. It's holding the vinyl down and we're able to weed. Oh my gosh, it did cut like butter. I'm telling you. I didn't burnish. A lot of times I do burnish, but I wanted to test the settings. I'm telling you. It's those so, settings make the difference. Look, if we burnish, you know, before we start weeding, if we burnish, I mean, this new burnishing tool is beautiful. <laughs> it's just so good. Okay. It actually feels a little bit different. So this has a different finish than our other one. I have a pink one from someone else. This one's <laughs> a little bit different. So you're going to really enjoy it uh, yeah. for anyone that's joining the membership. Right? Like, look at this. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Why is my weeding so crazy today? This tech wrap is like a different animal, dude. Like it's, it's different, but the yep. color is cool. That's why, like, I feel like that's why so many people, and we love the tech wrap because they, they offer so many different colors. Yeah. It did take us a minute. All right, look at this paper. This is 12 by 12. You only need one 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock to do this project, which is cool. Um, for the box. So how many of us are scared to do the box? Like come in, watch. I put the paper on the mat. We're loading it in. We're going to change the setting, the material setting to, let's look what options we got under cardstock. We're going to use heavy cardstock, a hundred pounds. And we're going to press done. And we are going to change our tool. So it's automatically going to think we are using the double scoring tool. So let's click edit and we're going to click scoring stylus. Okay. Do y'all see that scoring stylus? Mm -hmm. Um, so it's super awesome. Click apply and now let's watch it cut. Yay. All right. All right. So everybody that's scared of these boxes, like just let's craft, let's go overhead. We're peeling the excess off. Beautiful. We're going to, Take this. Megan, we have not officially set a date for the website. Uh, no. We, we don't. We will be <clears throat> We will be you know. hopefully very soon. Yes. But it is in its last final stages yeah, of development. Yeah, we are like to the auditing site and like yeah. actually testing functions and things like that, which is super, super exciting. Um, so I'm super pumped. So here's our box. Now, if you, everybody's scared about using a box, like there's nothing to, to fret about. Um, it's super, super for? easy. I love it. Found this. Okay. Lost my ATG for a second. So, look here. You have these beautiful, beautiful score lines. All we're going to do before touching our glue is fold our lines in. Now, you don't have to have a, a bone folder, but a lot of you are going to be getting this beautiful new burnishing tool. So, you can click here, or just click here. You can burnish with it. It's awesome. If you're a grandfathered in member, 
you can email us and be like, hey, I, want, I would like the free gifts. Can I have the free gifts? You have to have been grandfathered in, though. So if you're grandfathered in, you can get these gifts, too. Just like an extra gift. Even if you're already a member, email customer care, hi at makersgallery.com. But if you are considering membership today, again, I cannot guarantee these gifts will be around. So if you want to be able to get the book and a mystery gift, could be what I'm using right now, um, you definitely want to get in today. I can only guarantee you by end of day. All right, friends? Yes, Chelsea also asked if I recently purchased the sublimation um, class, we will automatic. Will we automatically get the updates? Yes. Yes, you will be getting those yes. updates. Okay, so look, we, we did that. How awesome. Set this to the side, rinse and repeat for this one. Fold it in, top, fold this in, top. So how this goes, you fold this in, fold this in, fold this in, boom. And then, you know, it all kind of goes together. So we'll, I'll walk you through the building process. Super simple. This is like, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, is it really that easy? I love boxes. I've been making boxes since 2010. You'll be able to make boxes until 2045. All right. So here we go. Now we have our box. So first of all, we need to connect all of these little flaps. They need to be connected. You see that? Do you guys see how they just go here? So it's really easy. I like to fold them all in. And then you can use hot glue here if you do not have an HEG gum. Do not make the HEG hold you back. If you're asking me which one's stronger, the, the hot glue gun would probably be stronger. The ATG gun for paper crafting would be more proper. Does that make sense? Y'all picking up. So mm -hmm. look, we take this. It's very forgivable ATG, so I had a little extra. Flap it over, and then just like so. That's part of our box. Now, take this here. I like to usually do the ATG all at once, but I forgot to do that because I was talking. But then look at this. We got our ATG. Fold it here. Love, love, love it. Um, and then we, on this side, I can do both at once. So, like, look at that. So, like, look, we're going to do ATG here. And then we're going to do ATG over here. And we'll combine it all at one time, which is awesome. So, look, inside here. So good. Now, while we have this, I'm going to go flip this this way. Run ATG over here. And actually, I might pull out the hot glue gun because it will be easier with the way that we built this. Um, so it really could really use either one you would like. So, so we've had some questions. Yes. I was um, asking about building. weight at the cardstock yep. for the cardstock at Hobby Lobby. I would say, generally speaking, most 12 by 12 cardstock, and correct me if I'm wrong. But most, most, not all, most 12 by 12 cardstock runs at about an 80 weight, right? Some gets down to 65. I do not feel like 3D projects can be adequate at 65 no. pound weight. So be careful when you're picking. And if you're buying cardstock that does not mention the weight, um, like from your local craft store, you are just going to have that trouble because they usually sell that lighter weight cardstock. Yes. Um, I recommend buying cardstock from somewhere that you can learn what that weight is. Okay, so notice I'm gonna to try to add all my adhesive here, and this sometimes can be a challenge, but it actually helps a lot if you're able to get all your adhesive on and then build it. Sometimes, it, depending on the project, you can't do that, but, well, it also help if I put it on the right way. So I put it on the wrong side. A lot of us, if, we, if I had done that with hot glue, my paper's ruined. With ATG, so look at my finger and look at my ATG. This is shocking. I'll show you all. I know you may not be able to see it. My cardstock is unharmed. That was all the ATG that I just pulled up. My cardstock is not, un, like, is not ruined. I made a mistake, and my project is not suffering from it, and that is a blessing. So... Let's go ahead and remove it from this side. All right, so the HEG is very fast drying. That's why I like using it. Um, it's very sturdy, it's very stable. It's really, really, really awesome. So look, guys, that's your beautiful box. Come on. 
What is Dizonomic Cell Pro compared to Dizonomic Cell? I purchased Dizonomic Cell, and it was supposed to be a one-time. Um, am I supposed to purchase something else? So, Crystal, previously, Dizonomic Cell, you could buy Design, you could buy Cell, or you could go Pro, which gets you everything. So if you're Pro, you get all the updates. If you bought just Design or just Cell, um, which you cannot previously or currently do, it, is, it got too confusing. You are, it is a one program, like one. Like you go pro or you don't purchase, right? Uh, we simplified it this year, which is all. It's been very helpful. Um, so yay. All right. Now, we have our tile here. We have our vinyl, which disappeared. It's right here. Mm -hmm. We have our transfer tape here. I'm just going to open this up. I'm going to cut off a little bit. Right there. Yay. So... Um, people are saying that they can't find the weight on the paper studio. Let yeah, me just go online and let me see if I can figure it out. So for a you lot guys. of these papers are not like ho like Hobby Lobby does not give uh, a lot of paper. What I can tell you, though, the more advanced you get as a paper crafter, you're gonna be able to pick up the weight and say, oh, it's 65, oh, it's 85, oh, it's 100, oh, it's 110. So just get ready to like get accustomed to that if you become a true paper crafter, right? Would now, you glue I will acetate? Say this. I would glue it if you wanted to. Yes, we are did not today. Yes, look. Um, the cardstock that you're going to get, like just the individual sheets of cardstock from Hobby Lobby. Just thinking back, it's pretty flimsy. Oh, it's super. So thin. it's that's going to be what your 65 is. Normally, I would think your Some 80. Some of the scrapbooking paper at like individual sheets at Hobby Lobby is way lower than that. Mm -hmm. because the goal is to be putting in those scrapbook pages. Like, it's not for 3D projects, it's not for this, it's not for that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's super fun. But yay! Yeah, you can really tell by the feel of the paper. That's so true. All right, Lauren, look at this. <gasps> look at this! Oh, I, hope I can't see. my gosh. I'll go back to the video. Oh my gosh. Boom. Is it doing it? Boom. It did it. I mean, mm. look at this. Just go burnish her down. This is so good. We did it, guys. We did it. Yeah. <gasps> we did it. Oh I got goodness. the door song. I know. Hand. Dora, Dora, Dora. <laughs> the Explorer. I love the hard lines. Lauren was telling me, you know, a lot of times we do the the rounded lines, but oh my gosh. The that hard looks lines, better than the original. It it looks like it was always like this. Yeah. That's insane. I cut about four or five inches of glue here and I'm just gluing this down and look at this we have got this beautiful ornament bada -bing, bada -boom. I love it is this not adorable y'all I'm gonna let this cool down I love like the oh. snowflake that's that's giving me more snowflake vibe yeah. than the red and green yeah the blue and that oh my gosh Lauren mm. so anyway look at this y'all we're gonna put it in our box this was like such an advanced level project, y'all. Like, you did it. We did it together. Y'all. That looks so good. I'm obsessed. Y'all, can you sublimate on this top? Oh, that is a good question. So Marissa asked, and I know we had We've somebody had a else lot of people ask, ask, can you sublimate on this top? <laughs> yes, you can. I did it. You did it last week. Last week, <laughs> the exact same tile, mind you, that we have because we had 15 of them. So you can And I'm pretty sure we still have four left. After all of the trial and error, you can yeah. sublimate on it. You just have to add a laminate sheet to it and heat press it for quite some time. Ooh, but it watch works. Watch the video. It works. Yeah. <laughs>